What's up guys? If you're watching this video, you're probably here because you're experiencing the same heartbreak from Deathloop as I have been for the last few days. I'll just start off with this. So far, I love Deathloop. I love the gameplay. I love the exploration. I love the story. The story's got me hooked. I don't love the performance and neither does anyone else. So here's my experience. Like I said, I've really been enjoying the game. I've been putting out or uh, recording some videos. Um, I put out my first hour roughly of the game with my initial impressions. And I knew right away as soon as I started it that the game was gonna have performance issues because I'll just tell you straight up, obviously you're seeing the video. I have an ultra wide monitor. It's a 1440p ultra wide monitor. My graphics card is a 2080 Ti because I haven't been able to get my hands on a 3080 yet, just like a lot of people. Man, it's a really rough time for gamers. Anyways, um, I have an i7-9700K CPU and the game's installed on an M.2 Samsung SSD. So spec wise, pretty good. I would expect to be able to get around 100 FPS in this game with my ultra wide 1440p monitor. And for the most part, I can on very high settings with, you know, the ray tracing on, I can. But whenever I get into congested areas, my game will drop FPS dramatically down to like 40 FPS. Then there's the infamous stuttering issues that, that we're having with this game. A lot of people are saying, you know, it's the DRM that they use. You know, it's it's Denuvo. Denuvo is the problem. Denuvo, it's all these games that use Denuvo have issues. Well, that may be true. And you know, I'm right there with you. I hate the DRM in these single player games. We have to be online. It's bullshit, all right? I'm right there with you. However, I don't think that's the issue with this game. The issue with this game is textbook frame pacing issues. On top of that, there are other issues. It's not very well optimized. I shouldn't go from 120 FPS in one area to 48 in another area. That's absurd. The game wasn't ready to be able to release and that breaks my heart because I love Arcane Studios and I love, you know, I love Dishonored. I love Prey, but Dishonored 2 had the same issue. It had the same exact frame pacing issue. So it's clearly their engine. They haven't learned from their mistakes. And that's that's really, that's what's so upsetting about it for me. Now we've gotten all that out of the way. So the rest of this video, we're gonna be staying positive. Pretty much this video, what, what I'm intending for it to be is how I've overcome this issue and how I am playing through the game. Because like I said, I love the story, love the gameplay loop, I love the exploration, I love the puzzles. I love the characters, the voice. It's, it's such a good game. It's just the performance. That's really my only complaint. And the reason why I decided to make this video is because last night, I was recording a video of the game. It was nighttime at uh, Updom. I was in a really crowded area and I was getting between 35 and 48 FPS and they were stuttering and I almost threw up. I was actually getting motion sickness really bad. I had to stop playing the game. I had a headache and I actually almost threw up. I'm not being hyperbolic at all. I, I went into the bathroom because I thought I was going to throw up from motion sickness because the low frames, the stutter, it was, it was awful. And I said, you know, I can't play the game like this. I can't push through. I, I, before that, I had just been pushing through it. So how have I overcome it? Well, I've diagnosed this issue for like probably six hours at this point over the last three days. So I'll show you my settings and what I recommend. And also I'll help you cope with the fact that there is no easy solution to fix this issue until Arcane Studios can possibly put out an update the game has frame pacing issues it has to be ran at 60 fps or 120 fps if it fluctuates even by like one fps you're going to start getting stuttering on pc with mouse and keyboard so let that sink in that's our reality that we're living in i'm in the same boat as you i hate it this is ridiculous this game shouldn't have been released it shouldn't be 60 dollars. it's a triple a game it's 2021 coronavirus we're in a pandemic we're already all broken hearted you're killing us arcane studios stop please okay we got that over with we need to cope let's cope with this guys listen if you're like me you like the game you want it to run let me show you my settings and let me just kind of talk with you here so like i said you know if you can get 120 fps 
cap it at 120 FPS. You can cap it in the game or you can cap it through NVIDIA control panel. Either one works. Um, I will show you what I recommend doing. Yeah, loading screens. Let's get into the game. Pretty much, if, you're, if you have a 60 hertz monitor, then you should be good to go, depending on what your, your setup is, what graphics card you have and all that. Let me just go over my settings here. And uh, some of the more important things I'll start with. So we'll go over here to visuals and just start out in video settings. NVIDIA reflex and in low latency, you can turn this on, you can turn it off. I haven't noticed a difference with the stuttering. With it on, um, the mouse is a little bit more responsive, uh, which is what it's supposed to do. But the, the reason why I have it turned off is because with NVIDIA reflex on, pretty much your GPU is running at 100% always. I didn't want to do that because it was the main reason, honestly, because it was blowing hot air on my leg. Um, and I, I've tried it with both. I've tested it with both. It doesn't help with the stuttering at all. V-Sync, you want that off in game. Uh, we will be turning this on in the NVIDIA control panel. Um, if you have a G-Sync monitor, you want V-Sync turned on globally in the NVIDIA control panel. You always want NVIDIA's V-Sync running no matter what game you're playing. If you have a G-Sync monitor and you want to turn V-Sync off, in every single game's settings. That's really the only way to, to make sure that G-Sync is working. So um, I do have a G-Sync monitor, so I have V-Sync turned off. If you have a 60 Hertz monitor, you can turn V-Sync on because all it's going to do is limit your frames at 60 FPS for you. I'm pretty much assuming that the people watching this video have a higher refresh rate monitor. I think most PC gamers nowadays do, and I do, so it makes more sense to me. So after that, Upscaling, AMD Fidelity Super Resolution 1.0. You want this on, this is important. This is what's going to help us boost our FPS to get above that 60 FPS threshold. We need the game to always be above 60 FPS. That's our goal. It doesn't matter if you hit 300 FPS in one area, if you're hitting 55 in another area, you gotta turn down another setting. You wanna always be above 60 FPS. That's the only way that we're gonna get rid of the stutter. So. This is important. This will help you boost your frames. Basically what this is doing is it's, it's lowering the resolution of your game and then it's upscaling it. And that whole process is allowing you to pump out some more frames. Um, and it's, it's an extremely important in this game, especially basically this is AMD's comparable software to Nvidia's DLSS. Um, DLSS, I like it a lot better, but for some reason, it's not present in this game. Um, it actually does look like, if you look here, there's like a blank space here. I think the game was supposed to launch with the LSS and maybe they'll add that in the future and that'll help you if you have an NVIDIA card. But right now, turn this on, AMD FSSR mode. You want that on adaptive resolution. That's going to change to the resolution around while you're playing the game, depending on how many frames you're getting. This next part's very important. Adaptive resolution. You want that on manual. If you have a 60 Hertz monitor, I haven't tested this, but I assume V-Sync based is fine, but I would still recommend putting it on manual. Um, and the reason why is because you can tell the game how many frames you want to be getting, and then it will change the resolution in the background to boost your frames up to that threshold that we get to set. In this case, I have it currently set to 62. I would recommend somewhere around between 60 and 70 because you you want it to be slightly above your 60 fps threshold that way you're you're a little bit more guaranteed or it gives you a little bit of a cushion to stay above the 60 fps threshold if you set this to 60 then you'll run into more encounters where the game drops to 58 59 55 uh, whereas if you turn it up a couple um, not too much you don't want it to set it to like 144 because then the game will always be running at the lowest resolution and it'll look like shit. And we don't want that. We want it to look as good as possible. So set it to manual, put this at like 62, 63, 64, 65. If you're running into issues where you drop below 60 a bunch, you can try to try to bump this up a little bit, but um, I'm just gonna put it at 62 for now. Um, adaptive resolution mode. We're gonna have to set this to balance. Um, previously I was doing quality but when you get into congested areas, quality wasn't cutting it for me. I was still dropping down to like 45, 50 FPS. So I, I changed my to balanced. And the only time you're going to notice a difference is if your PC struggling to hit this 60 at 2 FPS mark. And the game has to continue to downscale 
to you, if you read it here to 75% of your, your native resolution um, instead of 85. So basically with quality, if you're already at 85% of the resolution and you're still not hitting the FPS that we've set in this case, 62, then the game won't, it won't continue to downscale it to try to get you your frames and, it, and you'll start getting stuttering. So I recommend putting that on balanced. Um, you can play around with these settings too. Um, we all probably have different machines. Um, and then down here on the FPS limiter, you can eat, if you set this to 60, I'll just do it here. You'll see, oops, you'll see that this adaptive resolution target, you can't, the max you can do is 60. So that's why I recommend just put this anything above 60 and then we will limit the FPS in NVIDIA control panel. I'll show you that next. Um, that, that will allow us to get this buffer so we can set it above 60 and we got a little bit of a buffer. I, I've noticed that it works out better this way. Okay, so that's it for this screen. Let's hop over to the advanced settings. I've messed around with all these settings. This is what I have found to have the best look and still I remain above my 60 FPS threshold. Again, I will help you cope. I am used to running everything maxed out ultra and still having FPS to burn. Graphics and games is important to me. It's not everything, but it's important. So if you're like, oh my God, I got to turn it stuff down to high. What am I poor? I get it. All right. I get it. You're not poor. We're, we're, we, this is a good game. Okay. Deathloop is a good game. We want to play it. We want to play it without having to go throw up. So that's what we're trying to do here. Um, just accept it and move on. You'll be a less stressed. You'll have less anxiety and you'll be a little bit happier if you just accept it and move on. Or if you can't accept it, try to refund the game, play it after some updates, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Twitter, link in the description. And I will put out a tweet if I, if I see that they fixed it and I'll test it myself before I do that. All right. So now that we got that out of the way, texture detail, very high. Um, this is more determined by your VRAM memory, the texture detail. It's not, it's not really tied to your FPS unless you're somehow over your video memory. Um, so you can pretty much set this to very high, um, is what I did. If you have a 2080 TI or a comparable machine to me, you know, you can mess around with these settings, but oh, there's another thing I forgot to mention. This is another really important thing. This game, you can change all these settings around, but unfortunately, I hate to break it to you, but you got to restart the game pretty much every time you change a setting. Like sometimes I would have been in here messing with some of this stuff. I'll hit apply and then I'll close the menu. And now I was getting 90 FPS and now I'm getting 48 FPS. I restart the game. Now I'm getting back up to my 90. Uh, there's something wrong with it. I notice it mostly when I'm, when I'm changing the adaptive resolution settings as well as the ray tracing settings. The stuff from, I'd say, texture details down to decal details. I think you can change those around without having to restart the game. But any ambient occlusion, uh, ray tracing, uh, adaptive resolution, all of that, you have to restart the game every time. So that's kind of a pain in the ass. I get it. Anyways, okay, now I've said that and I got that off my chest. Model details. This is an important one. I've noticed that the main thing that hits my FPS the hardest are when there's a bunch of NPCs near me. What model details does is if the NPC is far away from you and you have the model details set lower, then it will have a lower resolution on that NPC, which will help free up some FPS. So I have set this one to high. Um, you could try maybe medium. Um, all that this changes is how far away the NPCs are before they lower the resolution of them and lower the detail of them. So I've set it to high. That, that's helped me out a bit. Um, shadow detail. This is another one. Shadows are pretty big hitters in most games. And you'll kind of notice that you can turn them down and you won't really notice that much of a difference, especially if the game has good ambient occlusion. Recently, I was playing through Remnant and I actually just turned shadows off because they gave me a 40 FPS boost and I didn't really notice. So maybe that's a personal thing, but regardless, I have it set to high. You could set it to medium. Um, 
that's when I started noticing it around medium where the, the shadows kind of medium to far distances away looked like they were deteriorating and it looked pretty bad and it was shimmery. So I've set that to high. Uh, water details, how, didn't really notice a difference with FPS with this one. I just had it to very high. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. And I didn't really notice a difference like in the way the water looked either from between very high ultra and high, didn't really notice a difference. Terrain details. This is another one that, um, you know, it's not quite as demanding as the other ones we talked about, but it'll help you get some FPS. I've set this to high. That, that was like the sweet spot to, to looks versus performance. So I set that to high. Detail, decal details. This doesn't really change anything. Pretty much you can see your bullet decals that you shoot and how high this is determines how many of them stay present and for how long I haven't really noticed an issue with it. And since I'm having performance issues with this game, I've just turned it down to high. You could probably leave this on ultra and it's not really going to affect anything. Ambient occlusion. This is one where it's kind of hit or miss. I, I have had it on ray traced. Um, if you have an RTX card or higher and you're and you have ray tracing, honestly, this game, I don't think is using like true ray tracing because it's actually not that demanding. And I get the same FPS, whether I'm using ray tracing or NVIDIA HBAO plus. So it's kind of preference, but I will say this. I've had more weird stability issues when I had ray tracing on for ambient occlusion than when I had it off. But when I set this uh, Fidelity FX KKO performance, I set it to that. It did help me get some of my FPS and it doesn't look too bad. So I've set it to that. Um, but you could turn on ray trace. Um, it, there, it is pretty noticeable. It actually looks pretty good. Um, and it doesn't really hit your FPS that hard. But just know that I've had my game freeze on me and I lost five hours of gameplay um, and I had the ray tracing on. So it's more of a stability thing. So I, I'm not using ray tracing anymore. Um, you could do NVIDIA HBAO plus. Uh, it still looks really good, but you're still you're not going to be increasing your FPS if you set it to that. So that's why I've set this to the performance fidelity FX. Uh, sun shadows. I've set this to ray trace because I think it looks really good. And again, same thing. I've set this to simple. I've set it to ray trace. Don't really notice a difference. Uh, maybe there's two or three FPS difference, but the I wanted some ray tracing going on because I still want the game to look good if I'm forced to play it at 60 FPS. So I've set this to ray traced and um, I haven't noticed the stability issues with the sun shadows ray traced, only the ambient occlusion. Okay, post-process anti-aliasing, that's, I've just set to temporal, looks fine. TXAA sharpness, this is kind of personal preference. It's not really going to affect your FPS at all or your performance, just how sharp the image is going to appear. I've set it to 10 personally. Uh, sharpness post-process, I've tried to set this to fidelity cast. Every time I restart the game, it automatically sets it back to standard, so... I'm just leaving it at standard. Don't, I don't really notice a difference, honestly. Um, let's see. Okay. Okay, guys, don't look at that next one. Um, look, I get it. I hate motion blur. Motion blur, always off every game. But listen to me, guys. Hear me out. You're going to want motion blur on, on low. Now, I'm mostly speaking to the guys that have the higher refresh rate monitors, but it will look better if you have motion blur on low. Um, the, the, again, this is a preference thing. Try it out, turn it on, turn it off. Uh, you won't have to restart your game to change motion blur. I have found that it actually does make the game feel a lot smoother with it on low. Bloom, uh, I just had bloom turned on. It looks good. Uh, doesn't really affect your FPS. Depth of field, I have it turned off. It does affect your FPS a little bit. I usually turn depth of field off in games. Uh, again, that's another per personal preference. Lens flare. I think the lens flares in video games are dumb as shit um, because I have eyeballs. My eyeballs aren't cameras. Um, some games that can look okay. This game and most games, I just turn them off. But it's a personal preference. Uh, light shafts, I've turned on. They look good. God rays, they look good. Um, haven't really noticed uh, any hit to FPS with the, the light shafts, so... I just leave those on personal preference. If you want them off, turn them off. Okay. And that's our settings. So remember, let's rehash. Anytime you change anything to do with ray tracing or ambient occlusion or anti-aliasing or uh, resolution scaling, 
Um, any of those settings, you have to restart the game before they truly take effect or before the game, like the game like gets tangled up within itself when you change those things and you'll run into, it's almost like a memory leak where it just gets worse and worse and worse. So the main goal for all of this, try to stay above 60 FPS at all times. You never want to see it dip below 60 FPS. So while you're testing out your settings, set your FPS limiter to 120 and set your adaptive resolution target to 120. Try to, it's going to be stuttery as shit and it's going to look like crap, but just try to watch your FPS. Uh, make sure you have an FPS counter on. Uncap your frames essentially while you're testing your settings. Go to a congested area. I What I have been doing for testing, I'll show you. I have been going over here to this area at updom just because that's where i'm currently at and there's no way to like select a level easily and i don't want to go ahead because i am recording a let's play link in the description check it out if you like me if you don't like me definitely don't check it out because it's just more of this and i'm just watching my frames at the bottom currently because i it hasn't dropped below 60 once which is what i want the game feels okay there's no stuttering it's just low fps but there's no other no stuttering so that's good. That's what I want. Okay. So this is the area here. I've been going over in this area. You'll see here there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight NPCs all congested here. You want to get near that to see what frames you're getting and see if you drop below the 60 FPS. The game isn't stuttering. It feels okay. It's definitely playable. And I haven't dropped below it at all. Um, and also the game, it doesn't look too bad. It takes a little getting used to because, you know, they are, the resolution is lower sometimes depending on how congested the area is. I keep using the word congested. I, I don't know why, but I, I, it's the best word for it. When there's a lot of people around, there's a lot going on. It looks not too bad. Um, obviously I could have everything on ultra. The game would look better. Yes, we get that. Okay. But we've already been over this. This is, we're coping. We're coping gamers, okay? So we're trying to make this work. We're trying to stay positive. We all love the game. We want to continue to play it. This is how you play it and get rid of the stuttering so you don't have to go throw up. All right, guys? So that's pretty much all I have to say about it. I just wanted to get this video out there. Maybe I'll help one person out. That's fine. Maybe it won't help anybody out. Maybe everybody will hate me and say I'm stupid. We're here now. Check out my Let's Play if you guys uh, are enjoying Deathloop or if you don't have Deathloop or you refunded Deathloop but you still want to watch the gameplay of it. Check out my videos, but I am currently editing my next video uh, and my next videos will be a basically like an abridged Let's Play where I'm, I'm really heavily editing them, cutting out a lot of the boring stuff, crashes, freezes, just repetitive boring stuff. I'm just keeping in the highlights. So. Uh, maybe if that sounds like uh, something you're into, definitely check it out. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. This video has gone on for quite a bit, but um, yeah, like I said, I'm lonely. I just want to talk to people. See you guys. Oh, let me get my mic down here. Okay, uh, fun story. I accidentally stopped recording without showing you guys the NVIDIA control panel, so I'll probably paste this bit in somewhere inside the video. Um, so you want to go over to your program settings if you're new to NVIDIA control panel, or if you just need a reminder. Um, I already have Deathloop here. It will, if you've played it recently, uh, NVIDIA will automatically have that here. If it doesn't, go to add. And it might show up here. If it doesn't, go to browse. Browse to where you installed the game. For me, I have it here on my Z drive. So select whatever drive you have it installed on. Go to Steam, Steam apps, common, find Deathloop. And there it is right there. So you click on that and you'll go open. Boom, it'll be in here now. Uh, the only thing we need to change in here is vertical sync. Make sure that's on. So on. And then to set your FPS, this is actually something new, recently new to NVIDIA control, control panel. Maybe you didn't know about it. You can actually frame cap. You can cap your frames uh, in NVIDIA control panel now. So I've been, I used to use an you know, Oriva tuner. I've used NVIDIA inspector, um, but you can just do it through control panel now. So it makes things a little bit easier. So go to max frames here, set it to 60. And again, if you are maybe playing at 1080p, not ultra wide, and you have a 3070 or even a 2080 Ti, a nice graphics card, if you're able to hit 120 FPS, 
go for it, man. More power to you. This game will look great. It'll run buttery smooth. If you're able to stay above 120 FPS at all times, just make sure you cap it at 120 um, because it's a, it's a frame pacing issue. If you can get to 120 FPS, that's two times 60. You won't have any frame pacing issues. Uh, it's when it's not in a multiple of 60. So set it to 60. If you can't get 120 stable, if you can get it 120 stable, uh, I probably just, and you, and you didn't know about this. I probably just made your day, but unfortunately for most of us, um, no, we're all still, we're all still sad boys and we have to play at 60 FPS, even though we're spoiled and we are, our eyes are, 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 have evolved to be more sensitive to low frames. Um, and I don't know, set it to 60 FPS, hit apply. Don't forget to hit apply. And that's it for the NVIDIA control panel part.